Hello, everyone. So today, uh, what I want to do is give you a run through of a couple ideas that you can use for your final project. So I'm going to uh, give you five different uh, jumping off points, topic ideas that you could use to do your final project. Uh, if you want to use your own idea, that's totally fine as well. Um, so I'm just going to run through these five ideas. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences, uh, pros and cons of proprietary versus open source uh, technology. It's something I alluded to a bit last week. And then I will show you two more tools, uh, go into detail about some tools that you can use. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of how to do inverse distance weighting and digitizing in ArcGIS Pro. And so um, thus far, I've spent a lot of class kind of giving you different tools and options for things that you can do uh, in GIS, showing you how to do different things, how to manipulate data in different ways, how to do different forms of analysis. And so now that we're at the point where you need to sort of formulate and work through your final project, uh, I feel like you should be pretty well set up to uh, sort of go through a workflow. Um, so I've presented you with a variety of different tools. And so today will be kind of the last of that. And then for the last like week and a half of class, I'm going to sort of shift a bit and talk more about uh, some of the ethics impl implications, ramifications of GIS and the decisions that we make with GIS and talk more broadly about uh, some of that stuff. So that'll come um, starting on Thursday. So this is just the document that I'm uh, going to post to the final project page on Canvas. So you can find it there. Uh, and so this document just has um, links to a couple different data sources that might be helpful and some ideas for projects. So some data sources that might be helpful for a variety of projects, whether it's one of the ideas listed here or something that you might be doing yourself. Uh, census data, you can just look for it, uh, Simply Analytics, by searching it on the UBC library page. Again, we've got the DataBC site that you worked with in Lab 3. This might be a good uh, source for a variety of different types of information. There's lots of data on this site. Um, things like old growth forest, uh, protected wildlife areas, coastlines, roads, um, a variety of different things. So I encourage you to explore that if you're looking to do anything focused on BC specifically. Uh, for satellite and raster data, again, you've gotten an introduction into uh, Google Earth Engine, both getting a digital elevation model and some uh, MODIS data, but there's a variety of different data sets available. So I encourage you to sort of look through their website and see uh, what different types of data are available. I'll just review a couple of them right now. So if you go to their website and you go to the data sets page, uh, you can find a variety of different types of data, uh, sea surface temperature, climate data, atmospheric, weather data, imagery, a variety of different things, um, geophysical land cover data sets. And so the way this works is generally speaking, if you click on a data set, it'll take you, well, to the next level. There's a variety of different land cover data sets, for instance. Uh, so for instance, the Canada annual crop inventory, let's see what this data set has. So you go to the data set, and usually there's a description and then there's an option to open it in the code editor. And so you can click this and it'll just pull up the data, uh, quick like sample introduction to the data set. Um, and so I've given you some of the tools to sort of query and download data uh, using Google Earth Engine, but I recognize that this is all in JavaScript and I certainly don't expect you to know how to operate it necessarily for all the different uh, types of data and, there's some nuance to some of it. So uh, if anybody has a data set that they want to work with and they're not entirely sure how to interpret it or how to download it or analyze it, uh, please just contact me. I'm happy to you know, set up an appointment or set up time or you can just drop in office hours. I'm happy to help you work through it. Um, so in addition to the 
Google Earth Engine, there's another site called Hectares BC. This site will be really useful if you want to download data specifically for British Columbia. Uh, if you click on the raster data set, there's a variety of different types of data. Uh, they have a lot of climate data. So for instance, you can get uh, the most recent mean annual air temperature. If you just double click, it will take a second to load it. Uh, you can get a layer on the mean annual air temperature, precipitation of snow, uh, mean winter temperature, summer temperature, precipitation, a variety of different things. You can also get climate projections for the future, land cover, land use. There's a variety of different data sets on here that could be useful for any number of more physical geography oriented tasks. Um, and so like if you want to do good location for a ski resort. Maybe you need to know winter temperature and snow. Uh, this would be a good source to download. So you just open it in here um, and then you can uh, download the data using the export raster data button. And again, if you run into any issues with this, just contact me and I'm happy to help you work through it. Um, if you are using data BC and you need to clip a region by a map sheet, you can follow this link to find the uh, boundaries of map sheets. Uh, and so you just click uh, view on IMAP, I believe. And this will open up a map and say you wanna look at somewhere in central BC, you just zoom to the area you're interested in and it'll pull up the map sheet numbers that you need to type in to click your region by. So just a handful of data sources that might help you out. So I'm briefly just gonna go through each different idea. And so these are just starting points. I'm not giving you the full analysis intentionally because I want you to think through and add your own ideas to it. It's just a jumping off point to help you get started. Uh, and again, don't feel obligated to stick to one of these ideas that I give you, but please feel free to take any of these ideas and run with them. Uh, so the city of Vancouver, for instance, has an open data portal where you can get a variety of different data sets for Vancouver. So if you want to do something uh, focused on Vancouver, uh, you might want to do like access to green space and bicycle infrastructure in the city of Vancouver. So for instance, you can get parks, uh, you can get bike lanes, you can get uh, locations of all the uh, bike racks in the city. Combine that with maybe some census data on population or income and look at accessibility of green space. How does that relate to bicycle infrastructure? How does it relate to income or a variety of different things? There's a lot of different things you can do here. Uh, so if you go to this page, you can see uh, the city of Vancouver has a variety of different data sets. So for instance, if you just type in bikes, uh, bike paths or bike lanes, uh, it will pull up the bikeways layer. And so you can get bike lane statistics as well if you wanna look for parks. Um, they have that data set as well. And so uh, you have to scroll down sometimes to find it, but there's the parks layer. They also have drinking fountains, a variety of things. The bike racks data is one that, um, this data set is just uh, coordinates uh, or not coordinates um, addresses and so you'll have to geocode this data to get it to work out and so I'm going to provide a geocode script similar to what we work with in lab four but more uh, utilitarian all purpose just a few lines of code that will set you up all you have to do is paste in your map box API key and set the specific names of the columns that you want to geocode and you should be able to run it very quickly um, and I'll try to make it uh, as accessible and easy to use as possible. But again, if anybody needs help with it, please just reach out. Um, and so you can get some variety of data layers from the city of Vancouver and some of the things you might need to do with this are tabular joins, geocoding, select by location attribute, uh, buffering to gauge accessibility, uh, intersections with census data, say you get the number of bike racks or area of parks or length of bike lanes, things like that. You might need to classify your data in certain ways. And so again, just some ideas uh, for you to go with. Uh, census data analysis is a great idea for a variety of projects. So you've gotten a bit of an introduction into census data uh, in lab two. You worked with uh, a little bit of uh, income and housing cost data. And then in lab 
three, you worked with population total. And in lab four, you got a little bit of an introduction into demographic data with the percent indigenous versus uh, non-indigenous population. Uh, but there's so many different census variables available on Simply Analytics, and you can also analyze census data as it changes through time. So there's a variety of different things you can do with it. Uh, so find some data you want to explore and look at how it manifests at various levels, whether that's provincial slash territorial or census divisions, dissemination areas. You know, you can kind of choose the scale and the project can be focused on the relationship between multiple phenomena. So, you know, education or income or employment uh, or one phenomena more in depth, like uh, language knowledge, for instance. And so it might be interesting to investigate how these variables change over time. Uh, one thing that will be important to do here would be, let's say, data normalization. So for instance, if you want to look at housing affordability, uh, you need to not only consider the housing cost, but the income, right? Because if the income is significantly lower for one census tract than another, but the housing cost is the same, then relatively speaking, one census tract with lower income is going to be less affordable. Um, one that I've alluded to a bit when I covered the different types of things you can do with terrain analysis uh, would be find a good location for a ski resort. So again, you're going to want to get a DEM, you're going to want to look at the slope, the aspect, the elevation, but in addition to that, some other important layers to look at might be old growth forest where you can get from data BC. You don't want to put a ski slope in the middle of an old growth forest. Uh, under the winter range, so that's wintering range for uh, mountain goats and mule deer and things like that. Elk, uh, you might want to look at the streams layer, some climate data. And so again, a uh, variety of things you might want to do is look at slope information, restrict by climate criteria, use the RASTA calculator to calculate a suitability score, uh, buffer your roads, your streams, race sensitive areas like old growth forest, and maybe digitize possible location of your proposed ski resort. I'm going to post a video on digitizing. Um, another option might be to analyze trends in fire activity and potential landslides and burn zones. So, for instance, um, Data BC also has a data set of historical burn severity. Uh, that covers um, 2015. I think the data set's been updated more recently than just. Uh... All right, well, it looks like the province has decided to restrict access to the 2018 data for some reason, but you can still find uh, burn severity data for 2015 to 2017 here. Uh, so you just download it the same way you do with all the other uh, data BC stuff. So you can take the historical burn severity and overlay that with some slope and precipitation information to develop a uh, and use raster overlay analysis to say develop a score for susceptibility to landslide risks based on burn severity, precipitation and slope. So steeper slopes with high burn severity and in regions with higher precipitation are going to be more prone to landslides than gentle slopes um with lower precipitation for instance um and then the last option for um a potential idea would be looking at air quality in british columbia so i've posted a link to a variety of different data sources that i've compiled on my github page um looking at air quality in BC. So for instance, you could download data for the Fraser Valley and look at PM 2.5, which is generally the most um, hazardous uh, category for health. And so you could look at say the temporal trends in air quality or the seasonal trends in air quality or the spatial trends in air quality. Uh, and so some things you're gonna have to do here would be importing tabular data, displaying the XY data, do some tabular joins, submerging, calculating fields. Uh, and you want to do raster interpolation in this one, because again, there's various point locations where you've measured air quality, but they're not evenly distributed. Uh, and we want to get more of spatial coverage rather than just individual point observations. So again, I'm going to post a video on raster interpolation for lecture this week. And uh, zonal statistics might be another useful tool here. So feel free to take any ideas that I've outlined here and just kind of run with them change them, do whatever you want with them. Uh, these are just meant to give you sort of an overview of what you might be able to do uh, with the project.